Well, praise the Lord. What a time of worship we had. I really felt so overwhelmed by His goodness. You know, when we sang the song, Jireh, you are enough, Lord. You are enough for everything that we need. I felt like that is overwhelming the love and the blessings of God. I thoroughly enjoyed the worship tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, today is uh, the day that we are going to see in detail about the month of Elul. As we know, we have entered the month of Elul. <coughs> just beginning. Uh, just a couple of days into the month of Elul. Uh, it's a very important to understand each month is a prophetic cycle. So we should uh, understand what God is doing in each month and get along with His plan for that month so that we will be not striving but we'll be thriving. We'll be just riding His wave instead of figuring out what to do, what not to do. Amen? Because everything is written black and white in the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is there to reveal to us continuously progressively so it's very important so the first fruits that is the beginning of the month Ras Kadosh every first day of the month is so important set apart to God and it's a biblical mandate to worship and you know uh, rejoice in his presence and learn from the word of God it's so important amen and not only that the first fruits offering God is really giving a little bit of uh, an idea of what he does with the first fruits offering we all know tithing is common to all of us, 10%. But the first fruits doesn't have a percentage. But the first fruit says, I will bless all your household. It's an household blessing. We go and research the word of God. So that's the reason uh, during that time, the first fruits was very important. Remember that David was missing on the first fruits celebration, new moon, new moon celebration. And during Jesus' time, it was all there. They were doing it every month, Ras Kadosh, they were blowing shofar and doing all these things. Even the first century church did, but we did not, you know, follow through. But now God is restoring us all back as he's doing the final restoration. We consecrate, we celebrate the beginnings of everything. So we set up our Lord, this is the beginning, we dedicate to you. We set up our the beginning of the week, right? They're ending one week, beginning the another, another week. We begin a month, we begin a year, everything we dedicate it to the Lord and start in the presence. So first fruits is a very important, but what is first fruits? As I said, it's the beginning of new months. It's called also new moon in your Bible. And Isaiah 66, 23, it's talking about the millennial time when Jesus will be on the ground. He will be in Jerusalem. Amen. Glory to God. At that time, Bible tells all flesh shall come and worship before me. All flesh. Two times, every Shabbat and every first of the day, Rosh Kadosh, first fruits or the new moon, beginning of the month. Two times, because all the feasts are filled, fulfilled already in Jesus. There's no feast time during Jesus' time, because Jesus is the feast. He is on the ground, right? But he's expecting all flesh to worship him during Shabbat and the first fruits. Amen. Isaiah 60, Isaiah 66, 23 talks about it. All right. So with that in mind, just studying something which is not biblical or something new agey or whatever. This is the real deal from the word of God, the Bible. Amen. So Elul, the month, the sixth month, the name of the sixth month of the ecclesiastical year and the twelfth of the civil year. Ecclesiastical means religious calendar or biblical calendar. It's the sixth month, but on the civil calendar, it's the last month. So next month is a new month, new year, Rosh Hashanah, in the civil calendar. So this is the sixth month, and the number, the, actually the months go by number, but uh, they are also Canaanite names for certain months. Like the first month is, you know, the month is Abib, is a Canaanite, but number one, first month is biblical month. And when they went to Babylon, they brought all these Babylonian names together. So Yilul is a Babylonian name, all right? But the month is sixth month. So what does Elul means in Hebrew? What does Elul means in Hebrew? If you read the word Elul, the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabets are Aleph, Lameth, Vav, Vav and Lameth. Aleph, Lameth, Vav and Lameth. That's what it puts together, the word Elul is. But the word Elul is very interesting. It can be understood as an acronym for the very famous scripture I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine, referring to one's relationship with God. Amen. Song, some uh, song, uh, <clears throat> Psalm 
Song of Solomon chapter 6 verse 3 talks about it. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. He feeds his flock among the lilies. So it's a relationship between God and his children. The bride and the bridegroom. A husband and a wife. Amen. So this is the acronym. The acronym is Elul. Anilo dodi ve dodi li in Hebrew. Anilo di. Anilo anilo do anilo di ve do di li. Amen. It's like a rhyme, right? <laughs> yeah. Ani ve do di ve do di li. Actually, anilo do di, not ve. Anilo de di ve do di li. All right. So, what does it mean? This is acronym. Acronym of A L V L. That is Elul. So that is what the whole month is uh, dedicated to the relationship, the intimacy with God, to go back to the first love, to go back to the first love. So many of the places you might be listening to messages, all many messages are now talking about going back to the first love, going back to the first love. Why? Because this is one of the months that God really tells, I am your beloved, you are my beloved. Amen. Hallelujah. Ani le do di ve do di li. Songs, songs of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 3. That's the whole month. That's the acronym put together. It says Elul. Amen? Amen? So, it is very important that we pay attention. And this month's constellation is also Virgo. Virgo is virgin. <laughs> it's interesting, right? God God's constellation in the heavens so that we can understand what God is doing. Genesis talks about it, Job talks about it. So this month's constellation of stars is Virgo. Virgo is virgin. So we're not talking about uh, astrology, it's astronomy. Astrology is not biblical. That's perverted one. Astronomy is biblical. How do the, how do the shepherds, uh, how do the people know that Jesus was born? They came all the way from the east because of astronomy, the star, right? So Virgo, this month's constellation is Virgo, which is Hallelujah. Like I'm my beloved and my beloved is mine. He's talking about the virgin, you know, relationship that's developing towards the husband. A virgin got married and the intimacy develops. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So this is a good month to process and experience a new level of intimacy with the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So when you spend time with the Lord, if you have husbands, that will increase with your husband too right hallelujah and this month is also the month that precedes the high holidays so next month we know it's the beginning of Rosh Hashanah uh, it's the beginning of it's the beginning of Yam Toru actually biblically Yam Toru is one of the most important feasts for me if you ask me because this generation is expecting the fulfillment of Yam Toru what is Yam Toru it's a day of the final blast Corinthians talks about it the day of the final plus, Corinthians talks about it, Thessalonians, Thessalonians, Thessalonians talks about it. When the final blast blasts, we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Glory to God, we'll be caught up in heaven, we'll be with Jesus forever. That might happen next month. If all the four feasts of, was fulfilled to the minutest detail, I have no doubts that the next three feasts of the fall feast will be coming to pass with 100% accuracy. That means we are moving towards the coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ to take away the church, the rapture. That is Yom Teruah. And then after Yom Teruah, 10 days of off, then it's Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the day of atonement. So it's all high holidays. It's all off, 10 days of off. So this, this month is a preparation for that. Amen? How do we prepare? Turning back. Intimacy, first love, then the Holy Spirit will pinpoint. These are the things you need to get rid of your life. Amen. So this is very important. And this month, why is the shofar blown during the month of Elul? The, the Jewish people blow shofar every day. Every day, especially from the next day. They do not blow the shofar before Rosh Hashanah, until Rosh Hashanah. From the next day of the Rosh, next day of the Beginning of this month, they'll be blowing shofar every day. And but they're also reciting Psalm 27. Why do they blow shofar? What happens? The reason the shofar is blown during the month is to arouse the people 
to repent. Amen? The month of Elul teaches us the necessity that being willing to turn around, turn back. What happens if somebody blows a shofar? You'll be wakened. Wow. If you're sleeping, think about this. Somebody's shofar blows in your ear, what happens? <gasps> Wake up, right? <laughs> so that's what like God is, you know, the people blow shofar so that we can arouse from our slumber. Do you remember Matthew 25? Jesus talks about when he's coming back, they were slumbering. Right? We don't need to slumber because the Holy Spirit is there for us to convict us. So all we need to do, all we need to do is go to, go to the Lord. Amen? This month also the Jewish people believe it's the... It's a, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of what they say is, you show the back to the back and the face to the face. What does it mean, right? Back to the back and face to the face. What does that mean? So, this is their explanation. I believe it's true. God is always with us, facing us face to face, right? He's always with us. He never changes. He never forsakes us. He never leaves us. But when we are getting disappointed, disappointed with life, hurts in life you know we get rejections uh, all kinds of trouble what happens you are turning away from God your heart is getting you know kind of uh, disappointed whatever whatever right so you turn away from God he's still there facing you right the whole Hebraic blessing right May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. That means his face is always face to face, shining his light. But because of our hurt, rejection, the things that we go through every day, normal life, financial difficulties, you know, sickness, or problem in the family, we turn our back to him because of our heart. This month, you are awaking and going to the first love, you're turning back to him. Now we are yes. face to face. Yes. Amen? Amen? So this month is that month, according to the Jewish perception. Oh God, how many of you need that? Right? Yes. We need that. <laughs> so we need to be intimate with God. Turn around, turn back, go to God, and prepare yourself for the coming amazing season. Who knows? Jesus might, might come exactly on Yom Teruva. Praise God, I'll be in Israel. Glory to God. Amen? We'll be going up with him from Jerusalem, the city of the great king. Glory to God. So you, you are all here. He doesn't need to be in Jerusalem. We can, we, we can be taken away while, even while you're in restroom. That's right. Glory to God. That's the freedom in Jesus, man. Is that right? You don't need to be in some secular place waiting for him. You know, No, no, no. You can be just driving. Gone. Thank you, Jesus. After that, what happens? Only God knows, right? What happens to the earth? It's all written in the Bible. If you're watching me, if you don't know Jesus, believe in Jesus. He's the one who paid the price for you. He's the one who took all your sins. If you want to go to be with him in heaven, you need to believe and accept he is the Savior. Very simple. Just repent of your sins and ask Jesus to come into your life. Then when he comes, he'll be gone. Ten years, seven years of tribulation. Think about it now. How it is the world is think about during the tribulation time i can't even you know put my mind and wrap around it thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus amen glory to god so this month is also called the king is in the field the jewish people believe this is the month the king is in the field why because as we go into first love and intimacy he comes to the field into the field means into your field he comes to your office. He comes to your business. He comes to your ministry. He comes to the place where you are and he's going to meet you in the field. Amen. Amen. That's what the Jewish belief is. What is the difference between other months and this month? We know where do the kings live? They're coming in palaces, right? The kings live in palaces, all kinds of, you know, um, security, intelligence. He can't go near right so but this month is coming out of the palace is coming to the field jewish believers so when he comes you can go and meet him with no protocol hallelujah he's in the field he is coming to you so there's no protocol amen so that's what the belief of the jewish people but that's good but for us we are one step higher 
because we are ratified by the blood of Jesus and we believe in the issue of the Messiah why would I that's what Jesus did Jesus did the same thing because he chose the Jewish people he came down to them from the palace of heaven to the earth to the field of the Jewish people amen physically he came he was born among the Jewish people he visited them the king was in the field but they lost the opportunity that's what John chapter 1 verse 14 and the word became flesh and the dwelt among us who was privileged the Jewish people were the only people grew privileged that the king was dwelling among them amen physically and we behold this glory, the glorious of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Glory to God. What a blessing. What a blessing it would have been. But I want to tell you, we are more blessed than those people at the time. You know why? Because Jesus lives in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, cannot, he cannot forsake us because he is in us. Amen. How can he forsake us? He don't need to come down. He's already in us. The Bible tells in him we will live, we will live, we move and have our being. If you read the book of John, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, they are telling if you allow me come into your heart, we will come and dine with you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 What a privilege to be the believer in Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, one step above than the natural Jewish people when Jesus came to the earth. Hallelujah. He is within us. He is in us. The king is within us 24-7 all year round until we go up. And beyond that also, he is always with us. What can separate us from the king? Had nothing can separate us from the king because the king is in us. Glory to God. But why would God remind us of this month is the month that the king is in the field? So that we can get into an understanding, wow, the king is now, his ear, his ear. Amen. That gives you a kind of a remember and reminding, wow, the king is here. You. you can ask anything. You can ask anything. Hallelujah. What a privilege. What a privilege. Yeah. He stayed in the field. You know, let me give another explanation why it says the field. You remember the story Jesus said about sowing the sowing, the word of God. The sower is the man. What was the field? Jesus lives in your heart. That's the reason we ask him, welcome, come into my heart, Lord. I surrender my life to you. The king is in our heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So walk this month with that revelation. From beginning of this month, you must always remember he is here. You don't need to be looking far out there asking him to do something. He's here. That's the reason in Christianity, everything is inside out. It's not outside in. It's inside out. Amen? Glory to God. So this month is also the month that connecting to the alphabet, Hebrew alphabet Yod. You see on the picture here, Yod. 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 Amen? Alphabet Yod. It has three meanings. It, uh, it also has the meaning of Jew. Yahud comes from the meaning Jew. Judah begins with this one. So that's one meaning. The second one is hand of God. Hand of God. And third one is continuity, everlasting. It's like a cycle. Cycle. Never ending cycle. So God has appointed mercy from his hand this year. When the king is in the field, right? He just shows us the scepter. Anybody wants anything, it doesn't matter what it is. Anything can be given to you. If you owe 10 million dollars, it can be forgiven if king wants to. Amen? If you want a big mansion, if king wants to, he can supply the mansion. Hallelujah. Amen? So this is the month to, mer to grab with mercy. God's appointed mercy from his hand. You just have to grab it. You don't need to think, logically ponder, uh, Am I deserving it? Can I afford it? You don't need to worry about it because we don't deserve anything. His mercy. His mercy can bring anything. So be in that awareness this month. Whatever you need, 
financial freedom, whatever we need, go for it. We can ask every day because Jesus came to what? To announce the year of Jubilee, he paid the price. But certain months are prophetic because we go through all life motions and we forgot the times. So God reminds us, okay, listen, this month I am in the field. I am the king. I have mercy. I can give you mansion. I can get you out of debt. I can give you healing. Whatever you need by mercy, get it. Amen. Glory to God. What a blessing Amen. to serve the Lord. What a blessing, right? Amen. Amen. So we need to know to operate in grace. One of the biggest problems with us as Christians is we don't know how to receive. Without grace, without faith, without love, nothing operates in the kingdom. So His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Then this month is also connected to the month of, connected to the tribe of Gad. This month is connected to the tribe of Gad. The month of Gad, the month of Elul is connected to the tribe of Gad. Why? We'll see that. The tribe of Gad was the seventh son of Jacob. His mother was Leah's maid, Zilpah. is Jacob's son. Um, his birth was welcomed by Leah with the cry fortunate. She cried fortunate, good fortune, good fortune, good fortune. She cried fortunate, Genesis chapter 30 verse 11. Then Leah said a troop comes, so she called his name Gad. We see troop, right? Why would see troop? And but why the Hebrew Hebrew meaning is good fortune? Let's see that. She cried out, "Good fortunate!" And also, there's a prophecy over Gad to be known as troops. Troops means warriors. I will explain what it is in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> so his birth was welcomed by Leah with the cry, "Fortunate!" Or a troop comes. Both goes together. Unless you are fortunate, you will not be victorious, even if you are a trooper. Amen. If you have a troop, God's blessings brings forth. Amen. Hallelujah. If you go on to um, Genesis 49, verse 19, here is the blessing of Jacob over, over, that, over Gad, his son. Gad, a troop shall tramp upon him, but he shall triumph at last. In other words, when the, when, the, when, the, when the enemy comes and attacks him in the beginning, but at the end, he will win the war. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what is happening in the spiritual realm now. Jesus has won the war already, but the devil is still fighting, but at the end, he will win over everything. The same thing again. This month, you might have been experiencing already a lot of warfare, either on your, either on your finances, or in your body, or in your relationship, or in your business but this is the month though he is seemingly taking advantage but you will end up in victoriously that's what the tribe of Gad is Gad a troop amen Gad a troop shall tramp upon him but he shall triumph at last it's so important to understand this principle and then Moses again blessed Gad so simply put this month is a blessed month if you put in a secular term it's a fortunate month all right, and this month, though the devil tries to be taking advantage or leading, you will come back with strong power and you will be winning. You will be winning. Okay, let's go to the prophecy of Moses over this uh, tribe of Gad, Deuteronomy 33. You need to understand individual blessing was from our mother, the mother was bringing the identity while the son was birthed. The father brings the blessing over his son personally, and Moses brings the blessing over the entire tribe of Gad. That's a prophecy progression, okay? Deuteronomy 33, 20 to 21. And of God, Gad, he said, Blessed is he who enlarges Gad. He dwells as a lion and tears the arm and the crown of his head. He provided the first spot for himself because a lawgiver's portion was reserved there. He came with the heads of the people. He administered the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel. Let's dissect this scripture, okay? And Gad, he said, blessed is he who enlarges Gad. In other words, blessed is the person who connects with Gad and partners with Gad to, en to be enlarged along with Gad. Amen? So why? Because he dwells as a lion. He was a mighty warrior. He was a mighty warrior. Even when uh, 
you know the first tribes that were given the inheritance were Gad, Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh on the eastern side of Jordan. So they settled first but the tribe of Gad led the, led the, led the uh, whole tribes to the promised land along with Joshua. Though they were settled already in east of Jordan they went forward leading the troops to possess the promised land for the rest of the tribes along with Joshua. Amen. So they were troopers. They go with troops. There's a lion and tears the arm and the crown of his head. They're very fierce warriors. And they went all sided with David big time. David uh, the Gad is you know uh, Gad, the tribe of Gad was working with, uh, with David. So they were though given inheritance. That's what the next verse says 21. He, provi he provided for the first, first part for himself. In other words, he took the inheritance, he consolidated his position, and then he went with the rest of the tribe. So Joshua said, you got the inheritance, now go with your brothers to possess the promised land. And that's what they did. They settled all the children, all their animals, everything, and the warriors went forward. They led the way into the promised land along with Joshua. Joshua leading the march, of course. So he provided the first part for himself because the lawgiver's portion was reserved there. The judgments begin to go forth. Once they got the portion said, the Israel's judgments, and his judgments with Israel. In other words, how do I put it? So they got the inheritance first, and then the righteous judgments of God, the, the, the allotment of the lot of land for all the other tribes except for Reuben, Gad, and half tribe of Manasseh, which already have the inheritance on the eastern side of Jordan. So whatever the Lord allotted to the rest of the tribes, they were in justice allotted because God, Gad helped to move forward and battle with them. So that the righteous judgments went forward. Amen? He administered the justice of the Lord. Not his justice. Justice of the Lord that I have given you allotment, I'm going to give the rest of the allotment for the other tribes, the rest of the tribes in Israel, and he worked with God. You see here, he administered the justice of the Lord. What does it mean, justice of the Lord? Whatever the Lord promised, it will come to pass. Amen? And his judgments with Israel. Glory to God. So these are some of the important things. And also, if you remember the name um, Prophet uh, a seer for during the reign of David, Many of the suggestions uh, that Gad gave. This is not the same Gad, son of Jacob, but should be from the tribe of Gad. Otherwise, why would you, somebody name him as a Gad? So this seer prophet made a vital, played a vital role in David's time. Prophet and seer during the reign of David. <clears throat> he counseled David to leave Mizpah of Mahab. He was in the stronghold, remember, he was running around. And he, David, the Gad, the seer, told David, Get out of the stronghold, go to Hebron, and all the Israelites will come and they will reign you as king. That was instructed, given counsel by Gad, the prophet. Okay, so you can read it in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 5. And then Gad communicated David's punishment. You remember, David went and did the uh, censorship and God was not happy. Who gave him the advice? Gad. Gad was the seer, not just the prophet. He was the seer, sees things inside what God is showing him and then brings and represents to the king. Okay? Gad communicated David's punishment for numbering the fighting men of Israel. We read it in 2 Samuel 24, 11 to 14, 18 to 19, 1 Chronicles 21, 19 to 19. He also assisted David and Nathan, the prophet. See, Gad is a seer, Nathan is a prophet. There's two different things. All right? Prophets prophesy, seers see what God is doing and tell. All right? So David and Nathan is setting up the order of worship in the sanctuary. If you remember the tabernacle of David, everything was set up by David with the help of seer Gad and prophet Nathan. The order of worship in the sanctuary. And later wrote an account of the entire David's life according to 1 Chronicles 29, 29 by Gad the seer. He should be from the tribe of Gad. Amen. Why I'm telling all these things? You need to operate in the same way. You need to have a prophet. You need to have a seer. 
How does it happen for us as believers? This is it. When we come and pray with each other. When we come and pray with each other, somebody sees something that the devil might be trying to do against somebody's life. So immediately what we say, we rebuke the devil. This is it. We are not King David to have a separate seer and a prophet, right? Those times are gone. Now, the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. Every one of us. So when we pray for each other, that's why the Bible tells, pray for each other. The seer anointing comes suddenly on somebody. A prophetic anointing comes on somebody. You understand my point? Yes. So these are all good things to remember and function. So when you come next Friday or next Tuesday, remember this. Pray for each other. That's where you get the release of the power and the strength, right? Yes. So this is what it is. So we are the seers, we are the prophets, glory of God. Yes. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So I can go on and on and on. So we need to be mindful of these things. Elul is the month. Go back to private, go back to intimacy. I will summarize it in a minute, but I'll also finish one more thing. <clears throat> so this month, God wants to meet with us in a special way, very special way, and share a time of special intimacy. Uh, some of the times, the most intimate times that have been in my life is when I went through suffering. I remember particularly a few times when God was so close to me. I can just feel it when I went through times of, of suffering. I doesn't, I'm not telling that you need to go to suffering to enjoy Him. I'm not telling that. But there are times, you know, the valley experience are very important for life. You all can agree with me, right? When, when, we, are, when, you're in the, when we are, you know, scrapping the bottom, that's where you feel like God is so close to us. Praise God. That is our God. That is the speciality of a God. Amen? Glory to God. <clears throat> Water tastes so good when we are so, so thirsty, thirsty yeah. right? God comes through when we are so desperate <laughs> yeah. for Him. Glory to glory yeah. to the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and also remember, the King is in the field. And in our Christian life, though Jesus is inside of us, we cannot be alone without our family, spiritual family. It is very important. People always miss that point. We need a spiritual family. We need a... I'm not talking about church. Please don't take me wrong. I'm not talking about church. If the church, what you do, you go sit in a pew, sing a few songs, get out. It is not a family for you. Family means you get together, pray together. You know? That is family. That happens in small groups, even in a big church. If you're not in a small group in a big church, it is better not to do anything. It's not spectator Christianity. You need to have a small group, whether you are in a mega church or just like a small house of prayer set up or a small house church, whatever it is, you need to have a family, not just a family who pulls you down. It needs to be family with people who have the power and the anointing that can lift you up. Yes, amen. Amen? Which has the prophetic edge to it. Yes. An apostolic edge to it. Thank you, Lord. An intercessory edge to it. Yes. A compassion. A heart of love. Yes. All is so important. Yes. That's the reason our Zoom gang is so powerful. They're praying every day. They take communion every day. It's a family. Our 6 a.m. corporate prayer time with Susan leads on Thursday. That's a powerful family. They pray for each other with such an anointing. That's what I call as family, spiritual family. Are we gathered here like this? I'm not talking about general big, big things. I'm small groups. Small groups. Amen? So remember that. Do not be alone. It's so dangerous. That's the reason the devil is taking out everybody one by one, one by one, who are not connecting, just sticking into the online television or online with no fellowship, no iron sharpening iron, no, you know, no <laughs> overstepping on toes circumstances. That is what the where the growth will come. Yeah. Amen? I don't know why I'm selling this. Maybe you're watching on this broadcast. Don't be alone. Get into some kind of a family. When two or three gather, that's what Jesus said. When two or three gather. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
So these are some of the things. And interestingly, this month is the month Nehemiah finished the wall. Nehemiah 6.15. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul. In 52 days. Glory to God. In 52 days. When we come back, we are going to join the promotion for paying off this property. Amen. That's phase one. We are going to raise funds to Nehemiah Challenge 52 days. We are going to praise and worship and ask the Lord to release funds to pay this thing off so that we can move forward with phase two of building our you know, gathering place, our, our rotunda of prayer and studio and office space, everything. That's phase two. Amen? Glory to God. So Nehemiah built this entire thing finished in 52 days on this month of Elul. So that means... We are called to bridge the gap. Amen. The king has come to bridge the gap. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me summarize. This is the month of Elul. Let me close with this. Month of Elul. This is the month God is expecting us to return to our first love. More intimate with God. Amen. Amen. Elul is the month. It talks about the, the, the sweetness of relationship between husband and wife, a bride and a bridegroom. Jesus and the church, bride and the bridegroom, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Referring to one's relationship with God, it's the uh, acronym for the phrase, Anile do di vi do di li. Amen, Elul in Hebrew, glory to God. And this is the month the Jewish people believe the king is in the field, is not in the palace, it's in your field. But for us as believers, he is in us 24-7, glory to God. But we need to remind ourselves, wow, the king is here with us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And there's a month of tribe of Gad. Though you seem to be getting defeated by the devil. But remember, you are warrior in Christ Jesus. You are overcomers in Christ Jesus. We will win the war. Amen. That's the Gad's, Gad's anointing. This month's anointing. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And this alphabet is Yod. Uh, Yod. And so hands more God's mercy. God's mercy. God's hand is ready to give us a blessing glory to god Thank you, Lord. so the bottom line is get back to your first love amen. and remember who you are yes. amen may the lord bless you as we move forward in this month amen shalom amen.